All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Hardman Fishing Adventures. So, this is going to be a brand new series called Fly Fishing 101. And basically, the idea behind the series is that I get a ton of questions constantly asking me how I'm fishing, what I'm doing, what I'm using to catch the fish, uh, and stuff like that. And I basically wanted to start a series where all this information can live. Now, um, this particular video is going to be about brook trout fishing. And I'm going to give away some solid information. And trust me, you're not going to want to miss it. So, I'm gonna try to catch a few fish and then I'll explain more about the series because it's a pretty cool series in that you guys are gonna control where it goes and what happens in the videos in the future. So stay tuned and let's see if we can catch a fish to start this thing off real quick. All right, so before we get too far into this video, this video is actually sponsored by Post Fly Box. This whole series is actually gonna be sponsored by Post Fly Box. If you don't know what Post Fly Box is, it's a monthly subscription fly fishing box. It sends flies, leaders, sends all sorts of cool things to your door every single month. And they have multiple different types of boxes. They have a warm water species box, they have a salmon box, they have a trout box, they've got a fly kind box, they've got a salt water box. They've got just about everything that you could possibly want to do, regardless of where you are in the country. So, go check them out. I wanted to give them a super huge thanks for sponsoring this series. And the reason I kind of thought Post Fly Box was a good fit is because I truly legitimately believe that uh, if you're new to fly fishing, Post Fly Box is like the way to kind of get into it. Um, because I know that uh, fly fishing can be very overwhelming when you first start. Like the names of flies can get confusing, the sizes of tippet and leader, and the sizes of flies, and everything can get super confusing. And it would have been nice when I started about fly fishing if someone had just sent boxes to me each month that kind of allowed me to try different flies and different leader and different tippet and got me all sorts of goodies so that I could have uh, lessened the learning curve a little bit. So, huge shout out to Post Fly Box for sponsoring this video. Use code HARDMANTFB at checkout to get $10 off your first box. And yeah, all the link for all that stuff is gonna be down in the description below. So go check them out and let's keep fishing and hopefully keep teaching you guys some uh, good tips for fly fishing for brook trout. Big fish. He denied my dry fly. I'm gonna switch dries. This dry fly is just too big for him. Too big. All right, guys, so I've downsided my dry fly just because I saw a big fish move in this little run right here. And I think I can probably get him to eat, maybe. I think he denied my dry fly. I hope it was my dry fly and not my nymph that he denied. We'll find out. I didn't see the fish. Might have spooked him too. Nope. Oh, he missed it? Hello? No way, right? He missed it and I lost him. I don't know where he went now. Got him. There it is. <laughs> First fish of the day. Whoa. That's really cool, guys. So first fish of the day, I didn't even really, I mean, I wasn't supposed to give you a lesson right off the rip, but this fish denied my dry fly. And I had on a big stimulator, like size 12. He denied that. Look at the colors on that fish. And then I put on a little um, parachute Adams and he ate it. He missed it first cast, took a couple more casts and then he ate it. Chill, 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 chill. I'm gonna release you, dude. Thanks for playing, man. Back to where he came from. All right, guys, well, there's a tip right off rip. Tip right off rip. <laughs> I'm rhyming and on accident. But what I was gonna say is that um, I intended on talking about this further into the video, but I guess I'll give it to you right at the beginning is that I always start off with a big dry fly when I'm brook trout fishing because brook trout are super opportunistic fish. But if I see a few fish deny my dry fly, then I'll just downsize. And after I downsize, it almost always ends up in a fish being caught. And that was a perfect example of that. So, yeah, can't complain about that, that's for sure. Let's see if I can catch one here. I probably can. Yep. Oh, that was a nice fish. Got him. Well, this is the dry fly. I think it's a size 16 parachute Adams. These are some of the most beautiful fish on earth. 
which is part of the reason I'm doing this video on them right now. So guys, I got two fish instead of one, which is really cool. The fish are biting, so I'm gonna make this as quick as possible. But what I meant when I said that you guys were gonna control this series is that I'm gonna be reading the comments to figure out what the next video is gonna be. So if there's something you guys wanna know, like, uh, I don't know, what my streamer setup is or, or what my urinating setup is or what, whatever you guys wanna know, leave a comment below. And whichever comment that I see the most, that's what I'm gonna do the next video on or whatever comment gets the most likes. So basically what that means is that you guys are gonna control what these videos are even about. And I'm gonna release them monthly. So this month, this video is gonna be about brook trout. And then next month, the video will be about whatever you guys want it to be about. So I thought this was a cool idea and a cool way to get you guys involved with the series and kind of have a place for all of the informative or information content that I make to live so that you guys can go back and rewatch these uh this series or rewatch this uh playlist over and over again to see kind of what i'm using and i'll update it accordingly if i kind of change how i view things or if i change my setup and stuff like that so just quickly before we catch another fish i'm using an eight foot four three weight if you're brook trout fishing small streams you really don't need any more than a three weight anything from a zero weight to a three weight is ideal you can use like four or five weights but the fish really aren't going to fight much on it um, which is fine. Some people don't have the money or the time or the energy to buy extra rods for specific purposes, and I understand that. And this particular rod is made by Renegade's Fly Rods, and this is a Black Series Fly Rod, and this is a Renegade Black Series three weight reel to pair with it. My line is I have a Cortland Finesse Trout Fly Line on here, which is just a floating fly line, and it's finesse, um, which I don't really know how much that affects anything, but theoretically, when the fly line hits the water, it should uh, make less of a disturbance. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how much it matters, to be honest with you, for these brook trout. And my leader, I'm just running a store-bought 5X leader, running straight down to a dry fly currently. And the dry fly that I just caught those fish on was a little size 16 parachute atoms. Um, so, anyway, I'm gonna keep fishing and keep you know, trying to share some uh, knowledge with you guys as we go because that's pretty much the idea of this series. So leave a comment below, let me know what you want the next video to be about, and I'm gonna shut up and get fishing. Oh wow, what a pretty fish. Oh, I'm in pain, the stinging nettles are killing me. Look at this cute little hole. Of course there'd be a fish in here, but look how pretty this one is. The oranges on this one are particularly impressive. Look at his belly. That's an incredible, incredible little fish. I'm gonna pop this guy off and hopefully we'll catch a few more that look like that. Jeez. Jump out of the water for it, man. These fish are so aggressive. It's so fun, man. There you go, buddy. In general, these fish are not super difficult to catch, which is why if you're brand new to trout fishing, I would kind of, or fly fishing, I should say, and you want to get on some wild trout, uh, I would recommend them. Um, as long as you can, as long as you take care of the fish, it's not a huge, like they're easy to fish for. They're usually super aggressive. They're not gonna give you a hard time. Like they're not difficult to fight because you usually just pull them in. If you can get your fly in the water, you can usually catch them. And they bring you to like these like ridiculously pretty creeks. Like look at this place. It literally does not get any better than this. And it's just fun. It's just flat out fun to come to these places and somehow I got my fly stuck on the side of a freaking rock. Let's put it this way. I could have probably had, there's, there's multiple videos I could have made to start out. I just have been enjoying brook trout fishing so much recently that, oh my gosh, that's a big one. Come back to me, buddy. Come here. Wow, he went crazy for that fly. It's one of my bigger ones of the day, to be honest with you. Anyway, what I was gonna say before this probably eight inch fish interrupted me is that 
I could have made a lot of different videos to start this out and I chose brook trout fishing because I've just been enjoying it so much recently. And as you can, I mean, I think you guys can tell why. This is why you should try and catch a native brook trout at some point in your life. But yeah, uh, these fish are just like incredibly colored, just little pieces of heaven. And is, they deserve to be treated as such. So make sure when you're catching them, if you're new to fly fishing, to wet your hands and everything like that so the fish survives. Uh, get yourself like a rubber coated net or something like that so that you can leave the fish like in a live well. Basically is what this is essentially while you unhook them and stuff if you have to. And yeah, just have fun with it when you get out there guys. Just have fun with it because that's the whole point. So my biggest tip for brook trout fishing is to uh, hike and walk. Uh, one thing about brook trout fishing is you really don't want to fish behind anybody because the fish aren't all that difficult to catch. So most of them eat when your fly hits the water if they're in there and they're feeding which means that typically if someone fishes a hole they usually catch the fish like i just lost that how did i lose that he didn't even go anywhere he's still sitting there but anyway what i was saying is what that means is that um they usually take a long time to reset if they reset at all so i usually leave like if I know someone else has fished a hole or fished a stretch of creek or even fished the creek, um, I usually don't fish it because it's not worth the time. There's plenty of other brook trout streams to go around and there's no point in like beating yourself over the head to try to uh, fish one particular creek. So usually the best option is to spread the wealth and fish all the creeks instead of just one of them. And this hole looks good, but my gosh, the stinging nettle is up to my eyeballs and I do not like it it's painful it hurts it's not fun Ugh. and I'm about to catch a fish here if I can cast oh he missed it he missed it again he ate it that time <laughs> Man, I'm gonna have to try to get some slow-mo shots of these fish for you guys, because they are just eating with no regard for their own health and safety. It's pretty cool. Come here, buddy, how are you doing? All right, guys, so I'm gonna slowly, methodically work up this hole, hitting the back end first, per usual. I just saw either a fish spook, or something happened right there. Oh my gosh, big fish. Let's go. <laughs> Dude, I, he came up so slowly like molasses and like stared at the dry fly for a second and thought, mm, what's the worst that could happen? And now he's sitting in a net. Beautiful little fish. All right guys, so that was a good little tip off rip too is that always start at the back end of the hole and slowly work your way up because that fish came out of the back end and that's a pretty big fish. Um, if you had just walked up and then cast it up to where the fish probably are going to be, then you probably would have spooked that fish. You never would have caught it. So just slowly methodically working up holes can help you out a ton because you'll end up catching more fish in the long run, basically. So yeah, let's see if we can catch a few more fish and see what happens. Oh, and speaking of a few more fish, there's another one. I didn't even see him eat because I was too busy talking to you guys. Come here, buddy. How are you doing? Chill, chill, chill. There's the second one. That also kind of came out of the back end of the hole. Look how pretty and orange his fins are. Ow, he's biting me. There, whoa. Well, that was not the most graceful release, but sweet. So that's two fish out of this hole. I would suspect there's probably some fish in the middle portion of this hole. And there is, and he jumped out of the water for it. He might come back for it. He might. Yep, he did. And I missed him again. <laughs> oh, man. If anything, you guys should learn that, like, you're going to miss a lot of fish. But the fun about the fun part about brook trout fishing is you get multiple chances at them. Like, that was the same fish. I missed him three times. And I still came back and I still caught him. 
Like there's not many other species of fish. Or there's not many other fish that you can do that with. And he ate it too. I mean, that flies like in his mouth. There he is. Woo! All right, so the hardest thing about brook trout fishing is not necessarily the fishing aspect of it, but it is finding the brook trout or finding the creeks that the brook trout live in. And one little piece of advice that I give to people is A, be willing to walk because the further you walk, the better the fishing's gonna get almost all the time. Like right now, the fish are actually getting bigger as the creek gets smaller and as they get further away from where people access the creek from. The second thing is that almost every state has some, about it, some amount of public uh, information on where brook trout live, mostly because most of them have to do some sort of um, study to figure out where the brook trout live just purely so they can help protect them. So almost every state has some sort of trout tier list or class system um, that you can usually look up and find online because it's all public information. So like, for example, Pennsylvania has a, like their class system. Uh, West Virginia has a tier system. Um, and that's just a good way to at least find a place to kind of start out when you're fishing and to kind of like find your first creek with your first brook trout in it. And then once you find your first fish, I mean, you can blue line till your heart's content and catch fish like I'm catching right now. So yeah, look that up, look it up for whatever state you live in. And I can promise you there's some amount of information on it. Another good one is a uh, Eastern Brook Trout Joint Venture. There's my little brookie there. So Eastern Brook Trout Joint Venture is a uh, basically like an entity that has kind of mapped out most of the brook trout in the Eastern US. And even I use Eastern Brook Trout Joint Venture quite a bit when I'm fishing like a new state because they have most of their, not all the waters listed, but a good majority of the waters listed. And although this is all public information, uh, you know, most people don't want you to know about it. And I'll probably get heat from telling you guys about this in a YouTube video, but I think that the more people that enjoy brook trout fishing and the more people that know that it exists, the more likely we are to be able to protect these fish when uh, things like clean water come under attack. So uh, yeah, just get out, have fun, catch a bunch of brook trout like I'm doing right now. As you can tell, it's not all that difficult, but hey, listen, it's fun as crap. This is probably gonna be up by that rock, which I assume is undercut. Let's find out. Ooh, nothing interesting. Maybe he's up feeding, got him. <laughs> this fish is particularly colorful. His dots are very, his spots are very um, defined. See you little buddy. Brook trout fishing, as you guys can tell, it's not like particularly difficult. I mean, it gets to the point where like, if you're fishing up a creek like this, you can almost predict exactly where the fish are gonna be. And if they're gonna eat like that one, I was like, well, that's where he's gonna sit is underneath the rock. And then when I casted the rock and he didn't hit the rock, I was like, okay, well then he must be sitting further up in the current feeding. So I casted further up in the current and caught him. gonna be up at that stick right there and you get a little bit further up uh, not gonna move that far for it that's the cast of the stick fish okay so nothing in the stick so once again what does that mean probably means he's up feeding in the current so I'll make one cast over there but really the current is what I'm looking at now I can get the cast I want to get. I don't know where that went. That's decent. Yep, there it is. See? If they're not sitting in the cover, they're probably up feeding. And it seems like most of the fish in this creek right now are feeding. Which is fun. It's fun to pick apart holes like this to look and be like, all right, here's the cover. Here's where they're probably going to be if they're feeding. And then, yeah, catch a brook trout, release them. Then repeat. 
So at the end of each one of these Fly Fishing 101 videos, I'm gonna do a little recap of the things that I went over in the video, plus a few extras that I may have forgot while I was out on the water. The first for this video is that the tippet I typically use is 5X, but it really doesn't matter all that much because brook trout are usually not very leader shy. And I just use store-bought leaders because quite honestly, it doesn't matter. The second is that the best time to fish for brook trout is usually April through July with a runner up being September. You can catch fish all times of the year, but in the winter it can be tough and the dog days of the summer can produce low flows that make it difficult. And typically the fish spawn in October and November and it's best to leave them alone during that time of the year anyway. The third is that my top three brook trout flies are usually stimulators, elk hair caddis, and parachute atoms, with the runner up being a small woolly bugger. Now obviously this is more about fishing in the summer than it is about the winter, and my fly choice would probably change if I was fishing in the winter. The fourth is the rod size is usually smaller with anything from a zero to three weight working best. Although any rod can work, it just makes it more difficult and slightly less fun if I'm being honest with you. But at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. The fifth is that most states have some sort of public resource that will allow you to find brook trout waters. They're usually not all complete, but it will at least give you an idea of an awesome place to start, and then you can blue line from there. The sixth is that be methodical on how you work up into pulls and runs, and that'll help you maximize the amount of fish that you catch while you're out on the water. These lessons learned while hiking these mountain streams can be easily translated to bigger water. If you're willing to put in the time to become an efficient brook trout fisherman, you will no doubt see the same skills and lessons translate to other forms of fishing. Learning how to read water, predict where fish will lay, and how to get the trout to eat your fly are very valuable lessons for any fisherman. And because they're relatively easy to catch, you can enjoy a large amount of success while learning along the way. So don't forget to leave a comment and decide what next month's video will be about. And by the way, this is a completely new video idea and new video series, and I'm trying to make this as entertaining as possible while also providing some good information. So if you have any constructive criticism or feedback that you can give me to make these videos more entertaining or better, let me know, and I will take it into consideration for next month's video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.